You are listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer, presented by Richard A. Boxhall, in which I chronicle my life and attempts to become a professional writer by, you know, doing some writing. Daily. Hopefully. Hello, today is Saturday the 14th of September 2024 and you are listening to the diary of a wannabe writer. Not going to be doing any writing today. This is not an excuse podcast. It's me telling you that I'm working today podcast or it's a me I'm telling you. I'm, yeah, whatever. Um, I'm flying to Chicago for work. Um, it's somewhere I haven't been for quite a while. I quite like Chicago. There are many places in the States I'm not a big fan of. Um, Chicago's all right. Um, now, our hotel, I used to really like where our hotel was because it's very close to the, there's a sort of pretend, uh, an artificial beach right on the uh, shores of the lake. And I can't remember what the lake's called. It must be Lake Michigan, mustn't it? Um, but we're not near that anymore. So I'm not going to get the chance to go there. But we are not a terribly long walk away from um, an object known as the bean, um, which is this big sort of reflective bean. Um, but then I've been to that loads of times and taken more than enough photographs of it, so I won't be going there. Um, and they're also not terribly far, I don't think, from the uh, fountain that is used in the opening titles of the television sitcom Married with Children, uh, which for some reason I used to really like. I'll tell you the reason, Christina Applegate, but never mind. Um, so... Yes, no writing will get done today unless because, again, it's not a hugely long flight. I don't know if you remember, but last week I flew to Atlanta and unexpectedly uh, did some writing um, on my break because um, it's an aircraft without bunks. So we had to sit in a chair. Uh, I wasn't tired. So I wrote a scene of the chapter I finished editing yesterday. So there is a possibility that later on today I will do that. Um, We'll just see if I'm, you know, if I, if, yeah, we'll just see if I, if I, um, I'm not tired when it comes to break time. If we leave on time, if there aren't delays, then it's possible I'll start doing that. Now, chapter 37, um, I mean, weird territory now because it's so close to the end. I've only got, I've probably said this before, sorry, I've only got two full chapters of standard narrative to go so i've got chapter 37 which i've got a detailed plan for uh, which basically sees um a big attempt by carl tucker to take back the arboretum um but it also sees a real attempt by the good guys to get the entity contained within the tree that's imprisoned in the arboretum across to the main network because um it it decides to advocate advocate for them. So if they can get this entity back into the collective, then the designated survivor scheme championed by Idrazil will happen and the lead characters may not die when the world ends or when, you know, when the planet is deliberately stripped of oxygen by the plants and flowers and then flowers and trees. So yeah, it's a really key chapter. Then um, Ragnarok starts in that chapter as well. Um, Chapter 39, which is the next chapter I write after, well, the the subsequent one after the one I'm going to start hopefully later today, um, is the one I've um, uh, decided to call, well, I'm not calling it this, but in my head I've called it the chapter of death because it's going to show you how a lot of the secondary characters in the book die. I don't know if it's too bleak. So I'm writing it in the full knowledge that I may edit it out. There are a couple of deaths that I do need to show on page, as it were, but I can always put those into the beginning of the next chapter if I decide that the chapter of death is too much. Personally, I don't think it is. I think it's, you know, it's a man-made apocalypse. Well, it's a man-made apocalypse accelerated by some angry trees. Um, So I think we need to show the consequences of it on some of the characters, which is, it's going to be sad because there are some like, it's not only going to be the bad guy, Carl Tucker, that we see die in this chapter. It's not only going to be Lord Farnborough that we see die in this chapter. It's going to be Ronnie's parents um, and I'm I'm selecting a few others it'll probably be um, there was a sort of nasty nasty character in the early quarter of the book called Erica Yates probably show what happens to her there's the social worker that found Ronnie that appears in a chapter in the first third of the book um, 
found her when she was a baby. Probably going to show what happens to her. I'm just going to have to basically whiz through the manuscript and select whose whose ends I want to show. I think the the character, um, the the social worker character, would be a good one because she actually leaves the country and goes to the Netherlands. So I can show a death occurring in a country other than other than the UK, which I suppose will help to underline that it isn't just happening in our country, even though the majority of the action of the story, in fact, I think all of the action of the story is set in the UK. There's news reports, obviously, of what's happening in other countries. Um, but I, yeah, so, yeah. So that's the decision I've got to make is how far do I go? Do I put that chapter in? But as I said, I shall write it first. Then that leaves me with chapter 39, which is the sort of denouement, the final the final attempt by the army to do something about Arbor Associates, which obviously fails because otherwise none of the good guys would make it into the epilogue and in the epilogue I'm going to a character is going to die not in a nasty way I've got lots of horrible deaths up until this point um, this one is I mean there's no such thing as a nice death but it's it's a, a person who's over 400 years old deciding you know what I've done I've done what I was here to do and I'm done now, and I think I'm just going to go to sleep and not wake up. Um, that's Ursula, who hasn't been in the last couple of chapters because she effectively uh, sacri potentially sacrificed her life, although she didn't die, to get the message of what was going on at the Arboretum to Idrisil and, and, and enable the trees to send Skult to save her. That means nothing if you don't know the story. Anyway, flying later. Talk to you tomorrow. If all things go if things go well, hopefully from Chicago. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. You have been listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer, presented by Richard A. Boxhall. Thank you for tuning in to my random ramblings. And if you'd like to know more about me or my projects, visit my link tree at linktr.ee forward slash Richard Wright, capital R, capital W. Thank you for listening.